This became a big topic of conversation this week. AEW president Tony Khan was a recent guest on Ariel Helwani's YouTube show. Now, this is separate from Ariel's other shows. He's got the MMA Hour, which is a show he had MJF on recently as a guest. He's interviewed lots of WWE talent for BT Sport. This was on his own personal channel. The interview was more than an hour long. It dropped about 10 days ago. It only made news this week, but it dropped about 10 days ago. At the time, I didn't hear much about it. Until this week when Ariel went on the MMA Hour and he called his interview with Tony one of the most frustrating and to a degree not so fun interviews of my career. Which is a hell of a thing to say publicly about the head of the second biggest wrestling promotion in the world when you were given access to the president and the CEO. He said about Tony, he didn't want to answer anything. You're going to come on and promote X, Y, and Z? Great. And I'll play that dance with you. I did at the beginning, but you got to give us something. To not even tell me how you were feeling. I'm not asking for specifics. All right, fine, I am. But is Punk going to wrestle for you? Is he coming back? You don't want to get into it? Fine. But tell me how you were feeling. Give me something. Now, if I'm going to talk about this and give my thoughts, then it's important to watch the entire interview. So I did. I watched the entire thing. Nobody comes out looking good in this whole thing. On the one hand, I completely understand Ariel's frustration. Tony Khan gave him next to nothing. It was very much a fluff piece for AEW. T Tony Khan was in full-on promoter mode, as he is in all of these interviews. And it's not for lack of trying on Ariel's part, trying to ask questions that people wanted to know the answers to. On the other hand, I think it was very stupid for Ariel to come out publicly and burn a bridge with the head of the company. When the time comes that maybe Tony can talk about some of these things, if, if that time ever comes, he definitely will not be running to Ariel Helwani to give that interview. But it wasn't just the comments that he made about the interview itself, it's some of the things he said after the fact in trying to defend himself from a lot of the criticism that he received. Uh, he got very defensive, and it just was not a good look for him. The most potentially newsworthy questions that he had for Tony had to do with the media scrum from hell, at All Out, and the status of all the people involved, CM Punk, Kenny Omega, and the Young Bucks. Even Punk, Omega, and the Bucks are said to be in the dark right now on where things stand. And the status of this supposed investigation, which, by the way, we don't even know if there is an investigation going on, because Tony Khan has said nothing about it. Not even about the existence of an investigation. At least WWE publicly acknowledged the investigation into Vince McMahon's hush money payments so that we knew there was one going on. And they had to because they're a publicly traded company. AEW is not. I understand that. But AEW won't even say that. There was a note in this week's Observer that at least one person involved in the incident has not even been contacted yet for an interview. It's been six weeks. We don't even know if there is an investigation going on. I've read that there is. I read a lot of things. I read that there is, and that it's being conducted by an independent third party. But boy, it sure would be nice to hear that from someone other than Dave Meltzer. Or Sean Ross Sapp. Honestly, the, the most newsworthy thing to come out of this interview is something that Tony Khan may have let slip by accident when he was talking about the creative process backstage. He said, I'll come in with an outline and I'll sit down with Tony Schiavone, QT, a couple of people in the back. Sanjay has become very valuable. Then there's a lot of people throughout the years that you'd go to. I think that there are specific people, even if they're not working in an office job per se, like a Chris Jericho, a Brian Danielson, a John Moxley. And of course, even people who are working in office jobs like Kenny Omega, the Young Bucks, and CM Punk. After he said the Young Bucks, he paused for a few seconds before spitting out Punk's name, but he lumped him in there with people with office jobs. It did not sound like he misspoke there. He, he knew exactly what he said. He was very calculated in what he said, I think. Could, he have, could it have been an accident? It's possible, but he named CM Punk. He lumped him in there with them. And that's the first time that it has even been implied that CM Punk is more than just an in-ring performer, that he might actually have an executive-level title 
like the other EVPs. I don't know if that means Punk is an EVP. Maybe he has no official title, but he gets employee benefits the way those guys do, health insurance. I mean, we, we don't know. But suddenly, it puts his comment at the media scrum about how he's trying to run a business here in context. Now it makes a lot more sense than it did the first time that he said it. And if Punk is more than just a wrestler, that could be one of the complications holding things up. It may not be as simple as just letting him go if that's what Tony Khan wants to do. And I still don't know if he has the balls to do it. We don't know what his contract looks like. So that, to me, was the most interesting thing that Tony Khan said in the 77 minutes that he gave to Ariel Helwani. The first thing Ariel asked him about that Tony stonewalled him on was if he was comfortable with MJF calling him a mark in promos and talking about his contract so openly on TV. Tony responded with, I don't want to talk about that. And he pressed Tony again, can I ask why? Can I ask why you don't want to talk about it? And he said, well, it's like me running Fulham. If you were to ask me about a player contract, I'd probably be vague and I wouldn't want to talk about it. But here's the thing. Ariel wasn't asking him about his specific contract terms. That was a deflection. Ariel did bring up MJF being on the MMA Hour with him recently, saying that he came to terms with Tony on a deal, uh, but not an extension. And he asked Tony if at least that's accurate. Can you at least tell me if that's accurate, what he told me on, on my show? And again, Tony wouldn't say anything. Why? There was nothing wrong with what Ariel asked him. He could have answered the question without giving any specific numbers. He wouldn't do it. If he's trying to maintain kayfabe for the, for the benefit of this storyline, which is what I think it is, there are ways he could have still tried to answer the question without just saying, I don't want to talk about it. So that was the first thing he stonewalled him on. Ariel asked him about Soraya's role in the company going forward and if she would be wrestling. He said, I'm not going to comment on her role. Ariel asked him about Bray Wyatt. This is before Bray showed up at Extreme Rules. Did you have any discussions with him or his people at any point about him possibly coming into AEW? He said, I don't want to comment on that. All he asked him was, have you had any conversations with the man? (laughs) Didn't ask him how they went. Obviously, they didn't go great since he didn't sign with them. But they could have had cordial discussions. Maybe, Maybe they didn't even talk. Maybe Tony Khan talked to someone who represented Bray. We don't know. He's simply asking him if he spoke with the man at any point. He wouldn't answer. He asked him, did you try hard to keep Cody Rhodes in AEW? Which, I mean, it's kind of a lousy question. I'm sure the answer is yes. (laughs) I don't think Tony Khan woke up one day and said, fuck it, go wherever you want. But he brought up Cody and asked him, did you try hard to keep Cody Rhodes? And again, Tony wouldn't answer. He said, we're back in the realm of stuff that I can't talk about, but I wish him the best. And Ariel asked him, was it surreal for you to see him back in WWE when he showed up? Tony says, I can't talk about that. Why not? Because I don't think it'll serve me well. That's what he told Ariel. Ariel said, why not? Because I don't think it'll serve me well. That tells me he's got some juicy thoughts that could get him into trouble if he was being 100% honest about what he thought about Cody leaving for WWE. Now, if I remember correctly, there were rumors at the time that Cody left of there being a non-disparage agreement, possibly uh, on both sides, to prevent either side from saying anything negative about the other. But it wouldn't serve you well to say something to the effect of, I think Cody had certain goals in his career that he wanted to achieve, and I wish him nothing but the best. That's it. That's all you needed to do. I mean, look, it's not the answer that most people are going to want to hear, but at least it would be an actual response. He was like a fucking pull string doll in this interview. He gave Ariel nothing. He did say that it speaks well to Cody that in a year where Steve Austin came back at WrestleMania and Vince McMahon retired, that Cody going back to WWE is one of the biggest stories of the year. But these are questions. Someone who is seasoned at doing interviews, which clearly Tony is not. He does plenty of interviews, but he is hardly seasoned at doing them. It would be easy to give some kind of answer without stirring up a hornet's nest. There's a way to do this. He just wouldn't do it. Either he doesn't know how... Or he just simply doesn't want to do it. 
you know, when it came to the other con, Nick Khan, Ariel admitted, look, Nick Khan used to be my agent. I just want to put that out there. Now, of course, he's the co-CEO of WWE. He asked Tony if he ever spoke to Nick. Tony said no, initially, but then eventually he admitted that, yes, I have, but over the phone, not in person. And then he wouldn't say anything about the conversations that they had, whether or not he would even classify them as being positive. Again, nobody would expect that private conversations between Tony Khan and Nick Khan, hey, spill the beans, what'd you guys talk about? But he wouldn't even talk about whether or not he would call them positive or not. And Ariel was was really pushing him on this, and Tony just wouldn't budge. But the main thing he asked about was CM Punk and the media scrum, which you knew Tony wasn't going to answer. But you asked the question anyway, right? You asked the question anyway. We don't know where the progress in this supposed investigation may or may not be. So ask the question, and the worst thing that he says is no. Or the worst thing he says is, I can't talk about that. I'll give you one guess as to what his answer was. Tony gave him his uh, his non-response. Ariel, at that point, should have moved on. Instead, he asked him the same version of the question six different ways. And he ended up being shut down six different times. It got exhausting to listen to this guy ask the same question over and over again, knowing he was not going to get a response. After the second time, you take the hint and you move on to the next question. But MJF, I don't want to talk about it. CM Punk, I can't talk about it. Cody Rhodes, I can't talk about it. Bray Wyatt, I don't want to talk about it. Nick Khan, I don't want to talk about it. Your bowel movement from last night, I can't talk about that. But I'm happy to talk about Rampage and how great I think it's been for us. (laughs) I mean, you can understand why Ariel would come out frustrated to no end. Now, I, I work in PR. I have coached people on interviews before. I've coached executive types on interviews before. At the end of the day, they're going to do what they're going to do. Tony Khan can hire all the PR people in the world. Nobody at the end of the day is going to be able to force him to do something he does not want to do. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't force it to drink, right? I'm sure you've heard that before. It's very true. But it would have been better for him to lay out or have his PR team lay out the ground rules for this ahead of time. And if there's a subject or six in this case, that he can't talk about, let the interviewer know about that. That way they can decide whether or not it's even worth it to interview this person. Sometimes you, you, I know, I understand you want to get the person booked at all costs. I can't tell you how many clients, if I knew I could get them booked on TV, if I can get them booked on, you know, one of the cable news shows or one of the finance shows, CNBC or Bloomberg or something, right? Whatever it might be. If we just get them booked on there, let's just get it. And then we'll worry about what the the talking points are going to be. So I get it. And Ariel's a big personality. He gets a lot of views online. So if you can get Tony Khan in there with Ariel Helwani, then you, you get that interview. You secure that interview. You get him booked at all costs. But what you end up with in certain situations is what we saw here, which is a very boring interview that does not yield anything of any real value. The problem is that those ground rules would have covered almost every single topic that Ariel wanted to ask him about. Now, he did say about Ring of Honor and the possibility of having a dedicated show for it that he would want to do something with Warner Brothers Discovery, but that you need to crawl before you can walk. And so the first real test for them was the Death Before Dishonor pay-per-view in July. And then they worked with them on that, and it more than tripled their projections. And he said the Warner folks were thrilled with it, But, you know, even on Ring of Honor, he didn't say anything beyond that. It's been three months since that pay-per-view. Has there been any progress made? Is there any kind of update you can give to us? I can't talk about that. One of the reasons I was surprised that Ariel came out so hard publicly at Tony is because as frustrating as the interview was, there were two different points in the interview where Ariel said, look, I know we're running low on time and you have to go. And and Tony said, no, no, I I don't have a time limit. I could stay with you. No problem. I'm happy to give you all the time that you need. I'm having fun. Well, that makes one of them. But Tony seemed very relaxed and very cordial with him. And then at other points, they were chatting about football, you know, very casually. He wasn't being a dick to him. He was actually being very accommodating of his time when he didn't have to be. So for Ariel to come out and put him down, you know, put him on blast the way that he did, I thought was very dumb. 
just from the perspective of hopefully we can either, you know, get talent from AEW to come on my show or maybe at some point we can get Tony back and, and maybe it'll be a better interview, whatever it is. I just thought it was very dumb. Now he's getting hate online from people for being biased. And the fact that, oh, you didn't ask Triple H any tough questions in your interview with him about Vince McMahon stuff. You know, he, he's going to get flack because his former agent is the co-CEO of WWE. And he has a pipeline to WWE talent through his position with BT Sport. That's the biggest difference between the two interviews is that the Triple H one was done through BT Sport. This one was, you know, Tony Khan coming on Ariel's personal YouTube channel. So he's not about to jeopardize the pipeline that he has to WWE for all those interviews because he's working on behalf of BT Sport. He's not going to jeopardize the pipeline he's got to Triple H and Seth Rollins and he did the interview earlier this year with Cody Rhodes. All of these people that he's chatted with this year, he's done those interviews on behalf of his employer which just so happens to be one of WWE's broadcast partners. They signed with BT Sport when they cut ties with Sky. 30 years they worked with Sky Sports in the UK until they moved to BT Sport. The interview was done through BT Sport. Ariel is representing them when he does those interviews. And they're really good. I love the one he just did with Seth Rollins. And even the one he did with Triple H I thought was very good. When he interviewed Triple H, he threw a bunch of names at him that people wanted to know about. Sasha Banks, Bray Wyatt... I think he may have put uh, Braun Strowman in there. Nobody expected Triple H to come out and say, yep, you got me. They're coming back soon. But he at least asked the questions. And Triple H, is, you know, to his credit, he didn't just say, well, I can't talk about that. He tried to give some kind of answer, the best answer that he could. He talked about Bray and how creative a mind he has, but how he could be his own worst enemy sometimes and he has to be reined in. Like, he gave us something. Ariel, though, didn't ask him about Vince. Now Ariel is fighting back and asking, why would I? Why would I ask about Vince McMahon? The analogy that he used on his show is that it would be like a coach, like Bobby Knight, being fired from Indiana all those years ago, and then asking the very next coach about what happened with Coach Knight. He says it's just not something that you would do, because it has nothing to do with that new person. Except in the Bobby Knight example, the new coach was asked about the incident where Bobby Knight attacked one of his students because the new coach worked before that as Knight's assistant. So that was not the best example for Ariel to be using. Ariel would have been perfectly within his right to ask Triple H for what his thoughts were on the Vince McMahon scandal, even if he didn't expect to get a straight answer. I mean, the man is Vince's son-in-law. He's not some rando off the street. Triple H continues to talk about Vince in glowing terms in every interview that he does and all the advice he gave me and what a great visionary he was. Triple H is on the fucking board of directors of the company. So I don't know why Ariel would think it would be inappropriate to ask Triple H that question unless he was told in advance by their PR people, no questions about Vince. It doesn't sound like that's the case, but that's, you know, that does happen sometimes. So, you know, look, when I watched the Triple H interview, I didn't come away from it thinking, man, you know, he really should have asked him about Vince. This sucked. What a terrible, you know, softball interview. But look, if he's going to defend himself and use that analogy, that's a pretty stupid fucking analogy to use. He would have been well within his rights to ask the question, even say to Triple H, look, I have to ask this. I mean, that's what he did with with, uh, Tony every time he would bring up a subject that he, he knew might be controversial. Punk. Cody. I have to ask this, right? You could have just been like, look, I have to ask this. With everything that's been going on, it's the biggest story in wrestling all year. Maybe the biggest story in wrestling of the decade. Your father-in-law, your former boss, Vince McMahon, right? Resigns from the company, no longer in power. That's why you're now in the position that you're in. What are your thoughts on that whole situation and how that all went down? Or And all Triple H has to say is, look, he might give the same answer Tony Khan gave. All I'm saying is if Ariel wanted to ask the question... He absolutely would have been within his right to ask that question. It would not have been an inappropriate question to ask because why would you ask the new guy about the old guy? That's just fucking dumb. But going on his show and on social media and calling the AEW fans freakazoids, which is what Ariel did earlier this week, it got exactly the reaction that you would expect. Look, I've gotten comments in the past from those same freakazoids. They do exist. 
people were upset because it sounded like he was lumping all the AW fans into that same category. I don't think that's what he was doing. He was talking about that segment of the of the fan population. He the freakazoids is an interesting word to use. I don't think I've heard that word used since I was probably in elementary school. But he's not wrong. I get comments a lot from those same freakazoids. They're very sensitive to any criticism that you have about AEW. These people do exist. But they exist in all companies. I've gotten it from WWE's fans. I've gotten it from AEW's fans. I've gotten it from Impact's fan. They all want to root for the home team, right? They don't like it when you speak the truth about things and you say anything negative about the company. They can do no wrong. Or they give you the whole what aboutism. Oh yeah, well what about this? What about WWE when they do the same thing, right? They can't admit that this company is not perfect and this company has problems, which clearly it does. The fact that you have to walk around in full body armor backstage at these AEW events is proof of that. And I've heard Ariel lob other criticisms against them for having too many titles and stuff. And again, absolutely right. They do have too many titles. We can go down the list. AEW is not perfect. There are plenty of things that you could validly criticize, the company validly criticize the product for. But it's not exclusively an AEW problem. It's just that the AEW ones, they're, <laughs> their freakazoids are, are something else. Ariel also said that if you think the AEW product is better than the WWE product right now, you're a liar. If you disagree with me, you're a liar is a pretty dumb position to take. Because, of course, it's all subjective. Even though WWE is doing better numbers and, and ratings and bigger business, there are people who think that the in-ring product, the on-air product, with AEW right now is better. I disagree. I fall into the same camp that Ariel is in. Right now, I am far more invested in the stories in WWE than I am in AEW. But that doesn't mean that I don't like the AEW product. I'm not going to call you a liar if you disagree. It was a dumb thing for him to say. At the end of the day, Ariel did not come across well. And Tony Khan just came across as your typical carny promoter. Who does not want to talk about anything except how great everything is. And that doesn't make for a very exciting interview. 